will move on to the third session of the day. <clears throat> now I am introducing uh, Sri Kolegala Sharma sir. I will be brief sir, definitely. But uh, I should say few things about you because you are an institution by yourself. Okay. Sri Kalyana Venkata Subramanya Sharma is full name but is popularly known as Kolegala Sharma. He was a former chief scientist CSIR, Central Food Technic, uh, Technological Research Institute, Mysore. He did BSc with CBZ from Mysore University and MSc with Zoology with the genetic as a specialization. He worked as junior as well as senior research fellow, Department of Radiobiology, KMC, and scientist B, National Institute of Science, Communication and Information Resources, New Delhi. Later, Nearly 24 years he served at CSR CFTRI Mysore as scientist C, E first grade, E second grade, senior principal scientist and chief scientist. He wrote more than 2000 articles in Kannada, weekly vernacular popular science, contributed to Kannada literature by his popular science writing since 1984. As a science writer and communicator, he has published more than 1,800 articles in Kannada and 250 in English. He has translated science stories for children for Pratham book and contributed 12 science fiction short stories. Uh, frontier research areas, science policy, ethics and science education uh, found in his uh, write-up. His writings are understood by village people in all languages even. He has been involved in several activities. He has been given 42 invited lectures, 42 radio plays in science. Some of them are prize winning plays. Two popular science books he wrote, one fiction he wrote and science podcast. Already Srinidhi sir told you about science podcast. It has more than 800 episodes. Uh, he has been a member of review committee of several science films. He, had be, he has been awarded with several uh, prestigious awards. That is a prestigious General Science Festival breaking Walsh NH. Walsh NH. I was not sure what is that exactly. We just yeah, award for science communication and award. And Several fictions he wrote like Naikate, Vasane, H, H Ram, H Room and H Ram, Patrigiti Pakka, Nodidere Nakase. There are so many things. Uh, I have uh, minimized this uh, entire biodata to a very, very short. And very popularly, Jana Dwani Patrike. We have heard about Dina Patrike, but not the Dwani Patrike. It has been a very, very popular. I also be a listener in that WhatsApp group because uh, it is very informative, latest research he includes and I don't know how much time it takes to prepare that. I asked once A.P. Radhakrishna sir, uh, who is this person because I was not knowing you about that. Then he told about you. Therefore, we are fortunate to have him today. Sir, welcome. Please enlighten our students. Long, uh, Introduction as long as my name. Okay. Uh, I'm here to speak to you about why do we need to communicate science. You have heard two stalwarts, two people who have who are professionals in a one field but have been experts in another field. Both of them are professionals in engineering, but experts in a different field, communication, theater, literature, and all, okay? So we always have two facets in our life, one as a profession, the other one as a passion. So if you want to combine both of them, the one field that will always be helpful is science communication. And I'm very biased about uh, Kannada communication, mainly because Build one. 
okay we may ask why we need to communicate science let me start from this it's our duty because the constitution says that we need to do and it's one of our fundamental duties to promote scientific temper among all all of us how do we do that is the question unless science is communicated to each and every one what i do in science if i cannot communicate well to others how do i bring that the question of how science is done what science does to our life how does science shape our society all these questions cannot be answered well and that is one of the reasons why we are doing this exercise of conducting creators also writing in or communicating in any form that is possible and uh, like shrinidhi said that we started much early even before the constitution was there so in 1900 in the beginning of 20th century itself we had a magazine in kannada and uh, uh, of course series of efforts have been there and in dakshina kannada especially in 1960s and 70s extremely good you know examples were there he mentioned about professor adyanar krishna but and uh, krishna but was not only uh, instrumental in uh, starting one uh, magazine uh, he was also associated with another one called samshodaka it was also published i think from mulki and then again i am very proud of another magazine that comes out from uh, uh, dakshina kannada from uh, padre sri padre's adike patrike so these are classic examples of how we can transform a society with science communication adike patrike is a specialized magazine and a specialized magazine cannot survive without adequate support from the consumers and adike patrike has shown that it can survive and it has survived for quite some time it's quite popular why do we need to do so this story i must tell again it has got a link with uh, dakshina kannada and that's why i have put it there probably uh, in 2011 we had a super moon and before super moon came all our tv channels were super excited <laughs> they started telling that <coughs> when super moon happens a lot of things happen fortunately or unfortunately fukushima happened and immediately there was a lot more things and one day i received a call from a, a newspaper sir uh, we are finding lot of uh, migration from south kendra so a lot of laborers who had come from north karnataka and uh, north india to south kendra started going back to their native places because they watched tv and uh, they found that one jyotishi had predicted that the arabian sea will come up to puttur <laughs> oh. i am not joking this is reality this is reality and people started migrating now you see when i say you are laughing but why did people get that fear what made them to be scared about this nobody knows so when we are facing something uncertain something unknown what happens is that the first emotion that comes is the fear and unless you are aware of things that fear cannot go and that's what happened in south kendra at that time so this fellow calls me at around 7 o'clock sir we tried all the astronomers or astrophysicists or other people but nobody is giving us a article can you please write an article i said when is the deadline we work with deadlines okay so he said sir 8 o'clock <laughs> what do i do i wrote a love letter <laughs> i wrote a love letter to my wife saying that look there were three super moons earlier and we were not able to see so why not we go for a walk tomorrow evening so i am not saying that what you believe is wrong i am not saying that super moon is not happening the facts are facts but the way that i communicate that the super moon that's happening is not dangerous is not going to kill me is what matter it was published on the 
first page of uh, uh, the uh, newspaper and uh, that is the thing. Similarly, <coughs> Chandrayaan has brought a lot of curiosity into <coughs> young minds. Now that is a, I am sorry, can I have some water? <coughs> so this is COVID effect. How many of you had, uh, okay, you are all youngsters, so you would not have had COVID. <laughs> sure? Okay. So, how was the experience? Very bad. But then, <coughs> the truth is, we old people should not be here amongst you people who had had COVID, especially without mask, unless you know what is happening, because you people still carry a lot of these things and you can spread it, whereas we cannot. So this is the truth and we can suffer more than what you people can do. And this understanding was brought to me by a senior scientist day before yesterday, one of the uh, stalwarts in uh, Indian science and who did genomic research because we invited him for a program and he said, I will come but I will not meet many people. So we were really surprised, why is he uh, so reluctant to speak to people? Because we knew that he was very fond of mixing with people and giving long lectures and all, like I, I am doing now. But then, when he said that, we asked him what is the reason. So he said, specifically, because he knew the things. So he said, this is the caution I take. Because I can mix with people above 60 and all, because they, they don't carry much of the virus. They suffer from the virus. Whereas the children can carry the virus, but still they cannot show much of the symptoms. There is no symptom. Elders will have the symptoms. So if I say, definitely I have something with me. But you will not be having any of those symptoms. So more dangerous. Youngsters are dangerous also. Okay, and dangerously adventurous, right? So, we need to also talk about the supermoon when we are so scared about supermoon, we should also be talking about how we can reach moon and walk on the moon. And how do we reach the moon? Okay, so these are some of the interesting things that we can do. So, two things that science communication do is to remove your fear, then bring some curiosity into what is happening and bring awareness. So these are the aspects that we usually look for. And uh, what does it do? This is the picture of a uh, toilet built under Swachh Bharat mission. Okay? It is half built mainly because the people there believe in Vastu. So the toilet door is in the wrong direction. So all the money spent on that is gone. So the government also needs to be scientifically tempered because we need to, it needs to tell the public that toilet need not have Vastu, maybe your bedroom. So something like that, I am just joking here, but what I mean to say is that if we do not communicate science or do not bring the scientific temper among the people, many things can happen. One, a fear among ourselves, like my senior had about the COVID catching up or the Uttur being washed away by Arabian Sea or this kind of mishaps. The money that we spend on public utilities can go waste. So it is essential that we try to reach out to as many people as possible and tell them about what we are doing as scientists and how does it affect them, okay? And how do we do that? Uh, We can do it in many different ways. Uh, Srinidhi has already given 
many examples. These are the ways that we can always use. These are the mediums or the tools that we can use to communicate. And when we say audio, visual, you can have movies, you can have videos, you can have performance theaters. And when we say text, that is what most of us would think of science communication in writing, but that is not the only thing. ICT have put, and then the games. Games are one of the important aspects of teaching science or even learning about science. And how many of us have looked at it that way? Have we created a COVID game somewhere? How can we get a infection or how can we get protection from infection or how can we defeat an infection? All these we have not. So these are some of the things uh, we still can do. And there are lots of things that are there, away news. There are 400 plus newspapers in Karnataka. But still, if you want any information on science, they are not available. So a lot more people have, have to get involved in this. Are they takers for science? Yes. This is a survey we did in Mysore uh, some time back. And we asked the people whether they would like to read science in Kannada. And we had about 25% of people readership actually wanting science. But unfortunately, the newspapers do not have that much of science. So the first thing that you see in a newspaper is maybe Rahul hit a century yesterday. I don't know because I don't watch cricket these days. Okay, Or maybe in the front page, all colleges closed down. <laughs> For what? We don't know. Colleges are closed. So similar things, these things get so much of news, whereas on the same day, if there is an important development in science, that is not carried. So we can we have lots of examples of that. I am not going to give you all of those. Then, what do we do about this? So we have done lots, quite a bit in Canada, in pre-independence era also, post-independence, and now also. So the, some of the details have already been given by Srinidhi. These are some of the earliest books. Again, Dakshina Kannada, I have to say. Okay. You know him? This book was translated by... How many of you have uh, learnt Kannada in uh, primary? Oh. Okay. Nagarahave. Havalu Huve. So, who wrote that? <laughs> Who wrote that? Lovely song, no? It tells you so much about Nagarhavu. Okay? And uh, this is a book published about 105 years ago on zoology in Canada. So it is not that we have not been talking or teaching science or uh, writing about science in Canada. Unfortunately, like uh, uh, Shashidhar said, the, most of the science literature or science transactions are being done in English and so we think that science, science can happen only in English or science can be understood only with English. So that is not true. Science can also be learned, taught, discussed and dismissed also maybe in Canada. Okay, so far in Canada we have had about 8000 books and maybe more of it. Most of them are in agriculture, biology, astronomy and environment. So there is a lot of scope for writing in physics, fundamental physics, higher physics, mathematics, and a lot more. And especially recently, uh, there are a few programs which you need to know, especially engineering students. If you are inclined to writing in Canada, the VTU has started a program where they want textbooks to be written in Canada. And that's a challenge. And uh, there's a good amount of money involved in that. And if you people are interested in writing textbooks, so the next question you will have to ask is, am I capable? That's a different question. But you can always prepare yourself because the textbooks are made 10 years hence also. So, and in electronic medium, uh, electronic medium, radios need scripts in science 
I started my podcast mainly because the radios didn't have enough time for science. So I started talking about science for about 10 minutes or half an hour in a week and then reduce it to 10 minutes every day. So this can be done by anyone. We need not wait for a medium like All India Radio or a newspaper or anything. We can become our own mediums. We can become our own communication channels and create these things, including videos. Videos require a lot more, uh, you know, skills and all. Whereas audios, especially uh, podcasts, are easier. So I would suggest if you want to do something in Tulu, start a podcast immediately, and Tulu science. And if you say that you know, communicating science in Tulu or any other uh, dialects is difficult. Uh, I should say, sorry, that is not uh, difficult. Only thing is that we have not attempted, probably. And once we start doing it, it will not be so difficult. Okay. Magazines we have. Some magazines already uh, Srinidhi has shown. And then, of course, new media, e Gyana, Tech Kannada, Kutuhali, these are all available. So these are some of the magazines that we have in Canada, and of course I give uh, preference to Kutuhali, which we publish together, and uh, that gets you the latest re literature. Sutra is another one which focuses more on mathematics. Vigyana Loka and Balavigyana are published by Karnataka Science and Technology Academy, and uh, of course uh, Balavigyana by Karnataka Raja Vigyana Parishad. What do we need? Terminologies is one thing that people usually say is very difficult. Srinidhi has already told. What we need is a concerted effort among ourselves because there are lots of terminologies that are used in Canada. So if we as volunteers can get together and create a cloud-based dictionary or a glossary, that will be better. There have been efforts like in Kanaja of uh, government of Karnataka, you get a number of dictionaries online. But that is the words that are already being used. But the words which are being created by writers or newspapers or anybody else fresh today are not entered, are not available there. So we can put them, once we notice something there, we can put them in one uh, place in a cloud and then make it available to others. And this is something that all of us can do. It need not be done by only Sharma or done by Srinidhi or this. So we can get involved in these kind of efforts. There are uh, uh, gaps in, Karna in Kannada which we have noticed. One is the cartoons. Cartoons are cartoon stories telling about science. These are not available. So more of these have to come. They, these are available in English but not in Kannada. So we need more of them. Many of you might be artists, so think about that. So you can even look at that in as a uh, scientific illustrations or another one, performing arts. We, talk, we talked about that as theater, okay? So performing arts is uh, another area where Canada needs a lot of action. And that action is missing. These are something that we are doing now, cartoons and uh, theater, of course. You will see this in a few minutes, a few hours, but there is something that uh, scientists, as scientists you need to do, or science students you can do a lot. We talked about climate change, right? Climate change is something uh, which is or uh, which will affect all of you. We are past your age, maybe in another 10 years, I will not even look at this sky, okay? I will not be there, maybe. But for you people, this is a very important aspect of your life. And if you don't think about that now, Arabian Sea may not come to Puttur, but there will be a lot more other changes which will affect us. So these are things that not only we need to understand, we means youngsters, all of you, and then also talk to other people. Who are the other people? I forgot to show you a slide and uh, I'll go back.
to this slide. This is <coughs> 2019 results. I think maybe the 2019 12th standard 3.5 lakh. Many of you might be here. Okay, who passed away or passed out of that? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> ah, all of you are alert. Very good. So, who passed out of your uh, 12th standard exam at that time? The question is 20? 20? 2020. Okay. So, one year uh, older. So, maybe you are seniors. Fine. So, what happens is that we have among these people about 8 lakh students regularly take 10th standard examination and only about 6 lakh students are pass out of it. So, you have 2 lakh students who do not continue their education, number one. Most of them have taken, uh, have studied only in Kannada medium. And even among those people, about 3.5 lakh students take up science or second PU. Maybe 60% of them take up science and in English medium. What happens to the rest of the people? In undergraduate courses or other courses, where they study only Kannada, okay, they are very fluent in Kannada and even if they want some information on the internet, they, it is not available to them. In, information is there, but then the access is not there mainly because of the language barrier. So, how do we build this gap is the question that we need to ask as communicators and that can be only done if we start writing talking, speaking or shooting, not with guns, please, okay, with your cameras, okay. In Canada, on science, let me go back. Citizen science is what the future that we need to talk about. I think I and Shashidhar have been discussing this for quite some time and I would like to uh, put it across to you. As students, what can you do? You can do a lot. So if you go to the laboratory and learn an experiment, think about that, where, where in my life can I use that? It could be about the texture of soil or it could be about the pH of soil. So check your pH of soil around your place. So if 100 students like you can check the soil quality in and around your surroundings, put them together in one place, you will notice over the time what change is happening. And once you notice that, you know, you can always find solutions to change those changes or prevent those changes. So this is what we need to do for the future of, you know, uh, dangers that we may face, especially in terms of climate change. And so climate change, pollution, water availability, water quality, air quality. The action has to come from the citizens. And that is where communicating science to citizens becomes very, very important. Can any of you tell me, can you tell your mother or grandmother what carbon is? what carbon is or what an element is. We all know, we have understood, right? All of you have passed second PU. So all of you know what is an element. So if I ask you, you will say that it is the fundamental. No, not particle. It's not a fundamental particle. It is not a fundamental particle. So it's the basic substance that we can find, okay? So we have about 118 elements, all facts, but what is an element? How can you explain? Unless you explain what is an element to someone else or what is carbon to someone else, so we have not understood these things. And the climate change requires this kind of understanding, this kind of communication to people. How do we do that? We are trying in all, you know, uh, mediums, all kinds of uh, um, efforts are being done. But then we need 
help of citizens like you. If you can help us, that will be very great. So citizen science is what we are looking at in the future. Involvement of all of you in communicating science, in creating science, and in talking about science. I stop here. And uh, if you have any questions, please. Because all questions about how to write or how to communicate to general public has been very elegantly conveyed by Srinidhi. If I start talking again about that, that will not be OK. I stop here. It's time, 1 o'clock. Thank you. Questions? No questions? Announcement that I want to make. Shrindi, you would like to make? Children's books. Children's books. Hi, Tato. Huh. Okay. As interesting as those two people. <laughs> so early, our, uh, the program that we are running now has several components that can be of, helpful, uh, of help to you. So we are conducting workshops for uh, students uh, in writing about science, okay? Popular science writing uh, workshops that we can conduct anywhere in Karnataka. Any interested students write to us at ignana or uh, kutuhali kannada, k-u-t-u-h-a-l-i kannada at gmail.com and we will come to you and conduct the program. Similarly, theatre workshops and similarly, uh, video workshops will also, can also be conducted. Okay? Thank you. Time for the questions. You can have one or two questions. Quickly. If there are no questions, uh, I would like to thank Sri Sharma sir for uh, giving very valuable inputs to our students. On behalf of the Pellicula Regional Science Center, now this is a time